Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Spacing Out. I'm Maureen Ellsbury. And I'm Alejandro Rojas. Thank you for joining us. We're here to get you caught up on the news, so here are some of the space and UFO stories that have made headlines recently. A bird watcher spotted something much more mysterious than birds in the sky above the English village of Burwell in Cambridgeshire. The witness reports that after a day of bird watching on December 9th, a UFO was spotted in the distance. The bird watcher, perplexed by the aerial object, recorded more than five minutes of video footage of the UFO. The witness uploaded the video to YouTube the following day. What on earth is it? Never seen anything like it before, the witness comments. As local media outlet Ely Standard points out, the witness claims to have noticed the UFO shortly after observing two CV-22 Osprey military planes in the area. Several RAF bases are in close vicinity to where the video was recorded. RAF Mildenhall, for example, is just a few miles from the sighting point. This particular military installation houses the U.S. Air Force 352nd Special Operation Group, which happens to operate CV-22 Ospreys. The U.S. Air Force 100th Air Refueling Wing is also housed at RAF Mildenhall. The organization conducts air refueling operations using KC-135 Stratotankers. Air tankers that perform air-to-air -air refueling operations are equipped with several lights on the rear of the aircraft to provide visibility and to provide navigational directions to refueling pilots. Based on the appearance and behavior of the UFO in the witness's video, a KC-135 is a likely identification, especially given the proximity to RAF Mildenhall. But in a comment posted on the video, the witness opines that the aerial object is actually a UFO, unidentified flying object from outer space with space aliens on board coming to kill us all. Okay. <laughs> Famous comic book writer Mark Millar recently tweeted his sighting of a huge glowing object over the town of Glasgow in Scotland. He says, I'm not saying this was a UFO, but he doesn't know what it was and he is not happy with the explanations that have been offered by others. Millar is best known for writing the comic books Kick-Ass and Wanted, both of which have turned into movies. Millar is Scottish and currently lives in Glasgow where the sighting apparently took place. Millar tweeted that he spotted the object over his hometown only an hour into the new year. On January 1, he tweeted, I know this sounds mental, but did anybody see that huge glowing object over Glasgow last night around 1 a.m.? Only one mention online. He continued in another tweet, We thought it was a firework at first, but it never exploded and just moved from south to north of the city over 60 seconds. He further described the object shape in the next tweet. The weird thing is it looked like a wingless plane flying sideways, a wide tube like a rolling pin. We all watched open mouth. Some people in the Twitterverse agree that it did sound mental. Others suggested that what he saw might be a Chinese lantern. A tweeter posted a picture of some lanterns and Miller agreed it did look similar but was just one light and it was very close. Millar did not agree with the lantern explanation and he tweeted so. He wrote, this wasn't a lantern, it went from Ayrshire to Campsies, about 40 miles in 60 seconds. Passed right over us and we ran to the other side of the house. Millar did want to clarify that although the sighting mystified him, he was not disregarding conventional explanation. The last tweet regarding the matter read, note, I'm not saying this was a UFO, I think a test plane only explanation. Mach 9 is now possible after all, but odd to see. Scottish newspaper The Scotsman said they inquired if the local police had any UFO sighting reports around the same time as Millar's sighting. They said they had not. NASA's Kepler Space Telescope hit a major milestone on Tuesday, January 6. It was announced at the annual winter meeting of the American Astronomical Society in Seattle that Kepler has now identified more than 1,000 exoplanets and more than 4,000 planet candidates. Kepler began its planet hunting mission in 2009 and although that initial mission ended in mid-2013 after two of the spacecraft's four reaction wheels failed, eliminating the ability of the telescope to maintain positioning, scientists are still combing through the significant pile of data collected by Kepler. Scientists from the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics analyzing Kepler's data recently discovered eight potentially habitable alien planets. The Telegraph explains that the new worlds double the number of small exoplanets believed to be circling their stars in the Goldilocks zone, neither too hot nor too cold, where water would not evaporate or freeze. Dr. Guillermo Torreste, the study's lead scientist, explains most of these planets have a good chance of being rocky like Earth. The Telegraph points out that of these eight planets that could potentially sustain life as we know it, the two most like Earth, Kepler 438b and Kepler 442b, orbit red dwarf stars that are smaller and cooler than the Sun. 
Study co-author Dr. David Kipping cautiously explains, we don't know for sure whether any of the planets in our sample are truly habitable. All we can say is that they are promising candidates. The team's research about these planets will be published in the Astrophysical Journal. The premature end of Kepler's primary mission was an unfortunate blow to the hunt for alien worlds. But fortunately, the spacecraft has successfully been repurposed. As Space.com explains, in May 2014, NASA approved a new two-year mission extension called K2 for the Space Observatory, during which a compromised Kepler continues to hunt for exoplanets, but also observes other cosmic objects and phenomena, including supernova explosions and star clusters. So, of course, Kepler has always been a big fascination of mine. I think there's a lot of great data coming in, and they, they have so much data that they still have to compile that um, I think it's a real testament that they're saying these could be rocky planets, which could potentially support life. I mm -hmm. mean, we got to get some missions out there with things that are actually going to go down into the planet and figure yeah. out what's going on. Yeah, Kepler um, is so exciting. It's so cool. It was really sad when it broke, mm -hmm. but I can only imagine what they would have done with it had it not broke because some of what it's done since it's been broken has been really extraordinary. Yeah. You know, my, my cousin actually helped work on Kepler oh, cool. in the beginning, and he was at the uh, meeting on Tuesday in Seattle, so I'm going to have to give him a phone call and, and see if he has any inside details on yeah. any of the dirt. Yeah, see what happened. Yeah. A witness recently recorded a video of an object streaking through the sky, and the video shows a peculiar object seemingly emerge from this UFO. Jason McClellan has the story. A man claims he recently observed a UFO streaking through the sky over Southern California. The witness, Ken Roberts, alleges that he noticed the unusual object while driving and stopped to record the incident on video. This video shows the bright object streaking through the sky, leaving a long trail on its path. A strange bright object is seemingly ejected from this UFO. The second object shoots off in what appears to be the opposite direction of the larger UFO. The witness describes, I was driving home after work when this UFO, or whatever you call it, caught my eye. I pulled over in front of somebody's house to film it. I would have gotten a better shot, but I didn't want to jump these people's fence. Anyway, I don't know what the hell to make of it. Couldn't have been a plane because there was no noise. And I never heard a crash after either. The orb thing flew straight up and into the sky and disappeared. Sorry I didn't film that. I didn't know what to focus my attention on. There's nothing in the video to suggest that the larger UFO is anything but a meteorite or some sort of space junk. And it's normal to see other aerial objects originating from a meteorite or space junk as it breaks up during the rapid descent to Earth. But the smaller orb UFO in this video behaves differently than typical meteorite debris. It's peculiar for a single object to drift away from a meteorite, then allegedly fly straight up into the sky. It's unclear from where in Southern California this video was recorded. The date of the incident is also unknown. But the video was uploaded to YouTube on Monday, January 5th. There were no UFO sightings reported to the Mutual UFO Network in Southern California on January 5th, 4th, or even the 3rd. But according to the American Meteor Society's website, many California witnesses observed a fireball meteorite streaking through the sky on the evening of Saturday, January 3rd. But those witnesses are in Northern California. One witness did describe that some fragments seemed to emanate from the tail as it fell. Another witness reported, I saw a secondary little fireball, very light at the time of maximum brightness of the first fireball. Dr. Michael Brown, a physics and astronomy professor at Monash University in Melbourne, Australia, shared another possibility with Australian news outlet Nine News. He opines, the video definitely shows a short contrail from a high-flying plane. It is moving too fast to be a comet and too slow to be a meteor. He continues, the orb somewhat but not entirely resembles a satellite that may have coincidentally passed above the plane. The Epic Times points out another possible explanation for the video. The whole thing might be a fabrication. Some believe both the main object and the strange orb in the video were added to the video using computer software. A Reddit user comments, I think this is faked. The explosion sound is synchronized with the separation of the object, which doesn't seem possible for the implied distance. The masking on the main object gets sloppy near the end of the video. For example, as it emerges from around the pole and passes behind slash over the last wire. Also, just before the last movement of the camera away from the small object, you can see the mask on the main object slip a bit ahead of time. It's unclear if something unusual was truly captured on video, or if this video is a simple for-profit creation. Shortly after the video was posted on YouTube, another YouTube user posted a comment in response to the video, expressing interest in the video and proposing an offer for use of the footage. The description of the video has now been updated to inform viewers that this YouTube user, who aggregates videos on a YouTube channel related to UFOs, ghosts, and other paranormal topics, has been given exclusive rights to use the video. Let us know what you think about this UFO video by posting your comments below. 
That's all for this episode of Spacing Out. As always, remember to visit our website, openminds.tv, for all the latest UFO news, and follow us on Twitter at openminds.tv. Also, don't forget to register for the 2015 International UFO Congress. This conference is the largest annual UFO conference in the world, and it takes place February 18th through the 22nd in Fountain Hills, Arizona. You can find all that information at ufocongress.com. Let us know if you enjoyed today's episode by liking the episode on YouTube and leaving us your comments in the section below. You can also download our podcast, Open Minds UFO Radio, on iTunes or at openminds.tv forward slash radio. Thanks again for joining us today. I'm Alejandro Rojas. And I'm Marie Nelsbury. We'll see you in the future.